Thank you, gentlemen. The Huskies back home in Seattle after an Arizona road trip hosting a UCLA squad that turned its season around after a mid-January win in Los Angeles over Washington. Welcome inside Alaska Airlines Arena on the banks of Lake Washington. Dan Helley alongside Casey Jacobson as we take a look at the starting lineups powered by Ram Trucks. UCLA starting two freshmen and two sophomores. Sebastian Mack leading the way. And for Washington, Keon Brooks, the Pac-12's leading score is the pace setter. Casey, the Bruins bringing the stingiest defense in the Pac-12, while Washington has the conference's second highest scoring offense. Yeah, UCLA, they're going to have to deal with Keon Brooks Jr. You mentioned he's averaging 21 and a half points a game in conference play that leads the, the Pac-12. But they held, UCLA held them to a conference low 12 points in that first matchup at Pauley Pavilion. So can they do it again? There's a look at Mick Cronin, a Final Four and back-to-back -back Sweet 16s in his last three seasons at UCLA, his fifth season in Westwood for Washington. Mike Hopkins in his seventh season here in Seattle, an overall record of 120 and 109 for the former Jim Beheim assistant. And we are almost set to get things started here. UCLA, one of those rare teams that might play even better on the road than they do at home during the season, Casey. Yeah, they have a five and three record in the Pac-12 conference on the road. That is second only to the Washington State Cougars that are in first place in this league. And, and one of the strangest stats I've seen all year, UCLA shoots 30% from three at home and 33% from deep on the road. We'll see if that trend keeps playing out. Yeah, you don't see that very often. Most guys more comfortable in their home gym. Early foul called on Keon Brooks Jr. Got a piece of Lazar Stefanovic. Here's Tavanovich pulling the trigger early. This is what I call an oil and water matchup, Dan. Washington wants to run, and they want this game to be in the high 70s or 80s. As Mulcahy draws a foul on that post up. Meanwhile, UCLA, they would love to keep this game in the 50s and 60s and, and make it a half-court affair. So a couple of fouls here in the early goings. You see what Mulcahy likes to do. He's one of those important pieces. Doesn't score a ton of points. And they're calling another foul down low, this time on Brandon Williams. Already a, a, a tight whistle. And some of the interior players are just arm wrestling too much. They got to show their hands. Well, both coaches thought this would be kind of a, a rock fight out here as Brooks is off the mark early. And they're calling another foul down low. This time on Stefanovic. Mick Cronin having a conversation. <laughs> hey, we're 20 oh, seconds in. You've, you've called oh, three really? fouls. And, that that wow. is the quickest tee of any coach in the country that I have seen all year. We haven't even played 20 seconds of this game. Three fouls and a tee. Wow. Keon Brooks going to shoot two for uh, for the Huskies. And, Mick, and Mick's still giving him the best there from across the sideline here. He's got to be careful now. All right, so our first points on the board, courtesy of the Pac-12 leading scorer, Keon Brooks, after that technical foul was called on Mick Crone, and down low and thrown it down in traffic is Braxton Mia. UCLA defensively, they were in some kind of funky zone. We're going to switch everything, but they left the man underneath the basket. That's where you got to start, and then everybody else fans out. Williams spinning was trying to drop it off to a Dembona, but turns it over. A brutal start for the UCLA Bruins on, on all accounts. They had done such a good job taking care of the ball prior to that USC game, but they had 15 turnovers, and there he is again. 
Braxton Mia with back-to-back -back dunks. It's a 5-0 Husky lead here early. How about the setup from Sabir Wheeler, number five in white? He, he can get in the lane basically against any player in the country. Williams misses the open look on the baseline. Brooks driving, bumped on his way to the bucket, no call. Good no call there. Dan Bowman is allowed to go vertical. You've got to leave the ground, but stay, keep your hands high. And all that contact was created by Brooks. Williams had an open look, passes it up, takes a much tougher shot that doesn't get it to go. Sabi Wheeler, they're going to go under ball screens like they did right there. He is a non shooter. Brooks too strong on the baseline. You see how UCLA is a lot more deliberate than Washington. They're just fine to jog the ball up and play inside out through a Dembona. In and out for Andrews. Mia grabs the rebound. Here comes Wheeler on the run. Oh, that almost went out of bounds. Andrews with the pull up. First bucket of the game for the Bruins. And Dylan Andrews has been playing a lot better offensive basketball in the last four weeks or so, averaging 15 points a game. He's not super consistent, but. He's only a sophomore. This is one of the youngest teams in the country, man, UCLA. Yeah, we mentioned starting two freshmen, two sophomores, one junior in the lineup. They've taken one transfer as Keon Brooks knocks down the triple in the last two years. That's Lazar Stefanovic in this era of college. Basketball, you don't hear that very often. The answer from Adem Bona. Well, if you're a Husky fan and you're unfamiliar with the Denbona, like, buckle up. This guy, he plays super hard, is, at, is at, at, as athletic as any player in the Pac-12 Conference. If he can stay out of foul trouble, yeah, he's one of the best power forwards in the game. Here's Wood. Husky's up by six here early. Showing the 1-3-1 zone, and they're going to switch everything as well. And now they're in man. Foul called. I believe it was Mulcahy. That was on the Huskies. His first foul, second team. Braxton Mia, UCLA defense loses him on that baseline end line, and he is so long. But the answer, uh, UCLA, a Dembona, a UCLA in a hole early. Pac-12 basketball is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. We talked about the youth on this UCLA basketball team, and. Man, are they young. The highest percentage of total scoring by underclassmen, nearly 81%. Yeah, and the way that this roster was constructed wasn't really, like, Mick Cronin and his staff, they wanted to go out and get some, you know, older transfers, but they missed out on several, and they said, all right, we're going to go with some international players and some freshmen, and we're going to rebuild this thing. And they have produced... On the defensive end, it's actually been really impressive what these young guys have been able to grasp the concepts after struggling for the first two months of the season, Dan. It really turned the corner. It's the offensive end that has let down the Bruins. If you watch them play this year, they go at least one or two stretches in every game, four or five minutes where they can't score. They return just 25% of their minutes from their Sweet 16 team last year. Seven freshmen on the team this time around, and it's... Sebastian Mack with the three to make it a three-point game. It's an important shot for, for UCLA, but also for Sebastian Mack, who was just two for his last ten from three. And Mack and Dylan Andrews, number two in blue, they are hard drivers. They want to. They, they only want to shoot if they have to. 
Wilhelm Breidenbach, number 32, has checked into the game for the Huskies. Okay, he thinks about it, pulls the trigger. And that's not his game either, Paul Okay, He's kind of a fill-in-the-gaps type of player, but he's a much better three-point shooter at home, and he knows he's got to keep the defense honest. Stefanovic off the side of the backboard. Well, Clay, he, as I was talking about earlier, it doesn't really show up in the in the stat sheet, but when he's going, this offense is going. Kind of the, the glue guy for this team. Keon Brooks with the three, and it's good. Yeah, if okay, he's the glue guy. Keon Brooks Jr. is the superstar. And Savi Wheeler, who's on the bench right now getting a rest, he's kind of the, the straw that stirs the, everything, the engine that drives it and pushes the tempo. They have, they have a lot of, of weapons here at UW. Stefanovic with a good look. We mentioned that UCLA, uh, for whatever reason, they are more confident shooting the three-point shot on the road, 33% on the road to just 30% at home. And so far, the Bruins, they're finding a rhythm. UCLA, two of four from three-point range. Washington, exactly the same here in the early goings. Bona back out to Stefanovic for another three. That was a mistake. Uh, that ball gets post-entered to a Dem Bona, and Moses Wood, strong side double teams, and no one else on the help side or weak side is even aware of that. It is way too easy of a catch and shoot for Stefanovic. Keon Johnson, who has been so good for the Huskies, averaging 20 points and four assists per game over the last four. One of the best six men, probably the best sixth man in the conference. Yeah, I, I agree. Corrin, he, he comes in and he just provides that, that spark and that juice on offense. And let's see how he can guard Dylan Andrews right now. Not very well. Gets the bucket and he's fouled. An important bucket for Dylan Andrews. You talked about how good he's been over the last four weeks, but he was held scoreless against SC. Watch Moses Wood, number 13. That is off of the pass. Pass goes in, he turns his back and double teams, and everybody on the weak side was not aware. And then there, Corn Johnson goes under the ball screen. And if you do that, Dan, if you go underneath the ball screen, then you better get your chest in front, or then you might as well just go over. You can't do both and get beat to the rim. Bona taking a rest. Adai Mara, the freshman from Spain, checking into the ball game for the Bruins. He's been playing a lot better as of late. A much heralded recruit coming in. It's taken him a while to assimilate to the college game and the physicality. Sebastian Mack called for the foul. Well, that's going to be two on him. Well, those are tough fouls for Sebastian Mack and UCLA. That was a, a ball screen that is happening 28 feet away from the basket. Oh man, I don't know about that. He was trying to, he was trying to fight over the top, and Braxton Mia kind of, you know, flops a little bit. But credit to Mia, he got the call. That's that's a big one there. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to slip through there. I don't like that call. Brooks. That is an inexplicable mistake by Bear K. Bayukmanjel. You're guarding the top scorer in the Pac-12, and you're ball watching. And that ball comes inside out, and you're nowhere to be found. There's Mara down low. He's fouled before the shot. Keon Brooks, by the way, with three threes and ten points so far. Watch number nine in blue. Where are you going? Why are you double teaming and leaving the top score in the conference wide open? And he's coming out. He's going to take a seat on the bench, and Nick Cronin's addressing it right now. But that's the youth we talk about, right? Bear Cape, I mean, I, he, he's a freshman. Yeah, I, I guess it, that to me is, is an excuse. I mean, he, Bear K is a good player. He knows who he's guarding, and I don't know what happened to him on that possession. No, no, I don't care how old you are for those. Mara from six, seven feet. Back to a one-point ball game. A guy of his size, Daimara, to be able to have that touch. That, that's why he's as heralded of a, a recruit. Guys who are that big, they just don't have touch like that. Bruins forcing the turnover. 
Andrews throwing it down low for Stefanovic, who puts it off the backboard and in. Mm, they had Braxton Mia right there and missed him. He was only open for a half second. Tough oh. shot in the lane and he gets it to go. KJ with the miracle shot. Washington up by one. UCLA is five for their last five from the field. Here's Mar again, fouled. Tough turnaround there. It's going to be Braxton Mia. Called for the foul. Washington up by one. And how about this circus shot from Corin Johnson, averaging 20 per game over his last four. That's why, right there. Spinning up and in for KJ. Twenty one twenty here Washington on top both teams shooting very well UCLA 61% from the field 57% for the Huskies and their leading scorer and best player Keon Brooks leading the way with uh, three three so far Dan we talked to Mike Hopkins before the game today and it was interesting I was asking him about Keon Brooks jr. And he said hey I know he's not gonna win the award because he's the top scorer and he was supposed to be in my you know an all-american this year but I think he is the most improved player in the Pac-12 and I raised my eyebrows at that and he said look he has absolutely raised his level of decision-making leadership and three-point shooting last year Keon Brooks Jr. was a 29% three-point shooter and this season he's 37% and so far he's got three threes in this one Yeah, it was hovering around 40% for a while actually has dropped down a little bit But much more efficient this year is Keon Brooks Jr. for the Huskies Let's pass There's Wheeler wide open and trains it Again, just a 24% three-point shooter. So Sabir Wheeler and Paul Mulcahy are two of the guards for Washington that UCLA is pro they're probably not going to guard. They're not going to close those guys out. Jan Vide from 17 feet off the front of the rim, battling for the ball. Bruins get it back. Here's Stefanovic. Is it, is it a surprise to you that Stefanovic leads UCLA in rebounds as Dylan Andrews drops in a three off that offensive rebound by Stefanovic? But then Bono doesn't lead him in rebounds. Right. Lazar Stefanovic does. The 6 7 guard. You do not see that very often. Oh. Spinning in the lane, a left handed layup. How pretty is that? Corin Johnson. He is so fast. They got Corin Johnson who's shifty. They got Sophie Wheeler who's hard to stay in front of. Yeah, that's a bad matchup for Stefanovic. Mara left handed hook, no good. Here's Wheeler. You see the quickness there. Loses the handle for a minute, gets it back, and then skips it over to Corin Johnson. Good look inside from Johnson. Foul called. Buckets good. Braxton Mia after a couple of early dunks on the board again. You can see what kind of tempo that Washington wants to play. They sometimes it's chaotic, it's frenetic, but it works for them. Corn Johnson puts Stefanovic in the spin cycle, and Morrow's got to be there to help early on that. He's got to be there. That should be a block for him, the 7 3 freshman. And then here, Stefanovic just a, a, a touch late. That's the right call. However, I'm surprised they. they Gave it an and one. I thought that that foul was, early. was yeah was before Mia went up to shoot that ball. I did too. Nonetheless, four point lead for the Huskies with about 9:45 to go here in the first half. Stefanovic now has two fouls though, Dan. Inside to Bona, bump going up, still gets it to go. And, and I'm talking about Keon Brooks Jr. getting better. And Adem Bona certainly has gotten better. The one area where he hasn't gotten better is fouls. He, he fouls too much, and that's why he doesn't stay on the floor enough. Wheeler putting that shoulder down in the lane. They're going to call a three-second violation on the point guard. Nice help there. We're going back to Adem Bona. 
Last year as a freshman averaged 23 minutes a game. This year just 26. And it's not because the UCLA coaching staff doesn't want him to play. They can't keep him out there on the floor very often. But he's a much improved low post threat now. Well, he doesn't have five gears. He only has one gear, and it's fifth gear. Bear K in and out. I mean, everybody, I drive an electric car. They don't have gears at all. It just goes. You <laughs> put your foot on the throttle, and that baby just takes off. I, I can't even say, of course you do, because you're from <laughs> California as Wheeler hits the three, because you don't live in California anymore. So two threes for Wheeler. Everything going for Washington here early. As you mentioned, Wheeler just a 24% shooter from three-point range this season. This defense from Wheeler here showing he's a two-way player. Stefanovic again from the corner. Bona going sky high for the rebound, but gets called for the travel as he's falling down. Doesn't get rid of it in time. Yeah, he's, he's claiming that he was grabbed by the jersey while he went up for that rebound, but you're not allowed to grab the ball and then fall down on, on your backside without giving it up. Dan, if Seville Wheeler is hitting threes, I mean, say goodnight. <laughs> he is such a tough cover to guard him. You got to back off five feet just to have a chance to keep him out of the lane. See how he's crowding that right hand? Exactly what they talked about. Yeah, so it's, it's really hard to guard Keon Brooks Jr. because he can do everything. But if you allow him to get, get to his right hand, you have no chance because uh, he can pretty much do everything. His, his numbers skyrocket when he gets to his right hand. So that time you saw Bear K really crowding it, but just a little bit too close. Leads the Pac-12 in scoring at 21 points per game, 15th nationally coming in. And he gets to the line a lot. Leads the Pac-12 in free throw makes and attempts. Yeah, last year he was second in the conference to Arizona's Azulis Tubelis. And now Keon Brooks, is, he's made an improvement in that area as well. Double team came the first time on Bona, not this time. Bona had such a big game against Washington back in Los Angeles with 22 points, just four here tonight. Yeah, 22 points, but he only had one rebound and one assist in that game, which is very unusual for him. Look at Wheeler. Oh, he's feeling it! Third three-pointer of the game for Wheeler. Oh, it was just inside the line. I got a little excited, Casey. Uh, you have to pardon me. Yeah, these fans don't really care. They, they, they are hungry to see this UW offense the crush the Bruins. Gel. Cuts the lead to five. And you and I have done a couple of UCLA games this year, and the Euton Gel is super skilled. Moses Wood. Came in having attempted 178 three pointers, the fourth most in the Pac 12. That's his first one tonight. Moses, really good shooter, and had a slow start to the year, but in conference play, 41% from three. Helps space the floor. Dylan Andrews off the mark. Uh, I, th I thought Xavier Wheeler was going to take another one. Uh -huh. He knows who he is. Don't get too greedy now, right? <laughs> Got to go quick here. If he doesn't go quick, the double team's going to come. Wide open is Will McClendon. KJ grabs the rebound off the hands of Wheeler and out of bounds. Well, if you want to play fast, sometimes you're going to have to endure some of those turnovers. But so far, it's been working. This guy is as fast as they get. You want him to take this shot. But unfortunately for the Bruins defense, it's going down right now. The Washington.
Washington Husky offense is off to a great start tonight. 67% from the field as a team, led by the top scorer in the Pac-12. Keon Brooks Jr. is just too wide open, man. He's like, thank you very much. He's made three threes. And look, there isn't a UCLA defender within five feet of every single one of these jumpers. In the first matchup, he was held to a conference low 12 points, and I know he had UCLA circle on his calendar. This is a revenge game for Keon Brooks Jr. Above and beyond sponsored by Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above, and there are your leading scorers in the Pac-12 with Keon Brooks Jr. leading the way. Yeah, a lot of awesome players. I'm so sad that this conference is no longer going to be next season as Washington and and others move on to the Big Ten and others move into the Big 12, but a ton of stars. K.J. Simpson as a junior point guard, what he has been able to do in his three years in, in Boulder has been incredible. And my favorite thing to do as a, as a broadcaster, besides work with cool, cool guys like you, Dan Helley, <laughs> is to watch programs and individuals like grow yeah. year after year and improve. And Keon Brooks Jr. is a great example of that. Starts his career at Kentucky and can't really get on the floor. And sometimes it's understandable. Was a good fit. And John Calipari has a ton of guys. And Keon got the short end of the stick. Well, he goes to Mike Hopkins and says, hey, I want to lead this Husky offense. And he has grown leaps and bounds. I'm just happy for him. Yeah, he has been spectacular this year. The Yukon gel off the mark. The rebound goes back out to McClendon. That shot was in and out. We have a foul call. Every game we do, Dan, we talk about like the two most important things. I, we always ask every coach, what's the key? And the two things that always come up, no matter what, turnovers. We can't turn the ball over, right? And win the win the rebounding battle. And I think it's really important for UCLA, who wants to control the tempo of this game, they have to win the battle on the glass. The Uton Joe blocked down low by Mia. And the Huskies trying to keep the mojo going. They have made nine of their last 10 field goals. <laughs> Foul called on Bayukton gel. Who definitely doesn't agree with the call. <laughs> no, he's actually not yelling at the officials. He was yelling at a Dembona. If you haven't seen Bear K play, and I don't mind this at all, he wears his emotions right on his sleeve for everyone to see. And when he's unhappy, you you definitely know it. And I think he was frustrated that a Dembona didn't hear him call switch, and he ends up with the foul. So UCLA just won for their last nine from the field. Brandon Williams is wide open. Oh, they missed him. Here's Williams working down low. Yeah, that's a foul. <laughs> On the rebound is Anthony Holland. Holland was banging down low yeah, there with I mean, He was extending two arms, though. Like two hands shoving Brandon Williams. I was surprised that that went uncalled. Block and foul called down low on Dylan Andrews. And UCLA down by eight with about four and a half to go here in the first half. Corn Johnson going to the line for the Huskies. Johnson, a 71% free throw shooter this season. In and out for the Seattle native. Won a state title at nearby Garfield High School before transferring to Wasatch Academy. Here's Williams wide open. And they're going to call the foul down low. State basketball tournament actually going on this weekend here in Washington. It's one of the hotbeds, recruiting hotbeds in the country. All those college recruiters, they, they, they make their way out to Seattle and Tacoma all the time. Well, they keep talking about NBA expansion, and Seattle's on that list. I don't think there's a city that deserves a team more than Seattle. Now, when I played in the NBA a previous lifetime ago, 
Seattle Supersonics, absolutely. They had Ray Allen at the time, who was my childhood like idol. I mean, I, of course, Michael Jordan, but Ray Allen was, to me, the best shooting guard in the NBA at the time, and he played for the Sonics, and I couldn't wait my rookie year to play against him. It was truly awesome to share a floor with the great Ray Allen. I don't know if there was a more pure shooter or more oh. fun shooter to watch than Ray Allen. You could also dunk it on your head, too. That's what made him even more fun. Deep three for oh. Wood Bottoms. Moses Wood, Tulane, UNLV, Portland, and now here to the University of Washington for the grad student hitting the three pointer. And it is an 11 point lead for the Huskies here on their home floor, trying to avenge that loss in mid January to the Bruins. Back in Seattle, Washington up by 11 over UCLA. They are eight for 10 from three-point range. And watch Feeble, number eight. He gets sucked into the lane because a Dembona and, two, and another Bruin go with the ball handler. Watch two guys handle the ball here off this ball screen, right? Are they trapping? Are they double teaming? I'm not sure. And it seems like the UCLA defense isn't sure as well. And Fible, the freshman, had to be there to protect the basket. That is not his fault. He's got to either, Dembona's got to better navigate that and communicate that, or the weak side's got to rotate over early because Moses Wood, he is a walking three-point bucket. That's what he does. Yeah, he is certainly a volume shooter from three-point range. 66 of 178 coming in. And he's two for two here tonight. So 183 point attempts on the season. And look at Boner right now. I, I, I assume that he's talking about, hey, if they run that play again, this is what we're going to do. That's what good defensive big men do. All right, everybody makes mistakes, but the best, they communicate it so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, this 1 3 1 zone, it, it sometimes looks like 2 3, sometimes it looks like 1 3 1. It's flustered UCLA. That was Sebastian Mack putting his shoulder down on the drive and unable to finish. Under four to go here at Alaska Airlines Arena in Seattle. The time they better handled it defensively, UCLA. Shot clock winding down. We're up four. KJ. Had to throw it up there, nothing going. Watch Bona here. Triple team coming on to Dem Bona. And there was a Husky that got a piece of it. I think it was Moses Wood. Here's Mulcahy trying to drop it off on the drive. Andrews with the stutter step in the lane. Quick timeout from Hopkins. He didn't, he didn't like what he saw in those last two possessions there. Paul Mulcahy, he's going to be able to he's gonna be aggressive and shoot that basketball. I don't know why he hesitates. That was the first bucket for UCLA in about four minutes. We're two weeks away, the best and the brightest from this conference. Battle of the Pac-12 Tournament live from Las Vegas. Coverage starts Thursday, March 14th, exclusively on Fox and FS1, streaming live on the Fox Sports app as well. UCLA coming into this game, fifth place in the conference, about a half a game behind Colorado. If they win, they would move a half game ahead uh, because they own the tiebreaker there. That means they would be one of the top four teams in the conference going into the tournament, which would give them a bye. Uh, obviously helpful yeah. if you're trying to win, right? One oh, less man. game. One, one less day that you have to be on the floor and in, in your hotel room putting your legs up. Absolutely. And what's, you know, it feels like the Pac-12 tournament could, could be anybody's ball game the way that this conference has played out. But, you know, an interesting stat. No seed in the Pac-12 tournament lower than six has ever won the Pac-12 tournament. So you don't want to be in that bottom half. That's why it's important for UCLA to close the season out strong. It was Johnson looking inside 
for Mia, UCLA gets a hand on it, knocks it out of bounds, and you're going to be at the Pac-12 tournament every step of the way. You bet, man. Be a, it's, it's one of the things I look forward to every single season. Be on the sideline for those, our FS1 games, and then the championship game will be on Big Fox. Love it. It's March tomorrow, partner. Hard to believe. <laughs> nice pass. Down low and throwing it down once again is Mia, his third dunk of the game. And Washington back on top by 11 with two and a half to go. I'm impressed with Washington's offensive execution. And UCLA is certainly making mistakes, but the Washington Huskies, their passes are pinpoint. They're making the right reads, and they're shredding UCLA in pick and roll. Bona putting the ball on the ground, pump fake. Mia there called for the foul. I believe they're actually going to award the foul to Moses Wood. The pick and roll has been good to the Huskies. They're going to continue to go to this because the dive man, there's just the backside help is not pointing. They're not talking. You got to make Washington, if you're, if you're UCLA, you got to make them earn it. A pass right down Main Street in a dunk, that's not making your opponent earn the basket. Dembone, 68% free throw shooter, gets the first. Chance to trim the leads to single digits here with just over two minutes to go in the first half. Bona coming into this game, second on the team in scoring and rebounding. Made a big jump from his freshman year when he averaged seven points per game to the 12 points per game this year. He's had 19 games in double figures. As you mentioned, partner, it is pedal to the metal all the time for a Dembona. And you know, you know, I don't like to watch defense that much, right, Dan? I'm like, <laughs> I'm an offensive guy. I like to see buckets, but I will watch a Dembona play defense any day of the week, man. He's special. This time, too strong for Bona, and you can see that defense for the Huskies collapsing on him as soon as he puts the ball on the ground. Here's Wheeler looking for three-pointer number four. No good. So Wheeler has had games where he's hit for three-point range. Had five threes against Arizona State earlier in the year. Andrews hitting again, and he now has 12 points leading the way for the Bruins. Dylan Andrews, one of those guys that Mick Cronin, even though he's only a sophomore, Mick Cronin trusts Dylan Andrews. He's one of the top players in minutes per game. Oh, oh my goodness. Wheeler on the oop to Braxton Mia. That's why he is so good, averaging almost six assists per game. He led the SEC in assists for three straight years before transferring here from Kentucky. Started his career at Georgia. Here's McLennan, his bone is battling down low, turns it over to Johnson. Wheeler spinning and dealing, no good. Mack pulls it out. This is an important possession here. If UCLA can get some momentum going into the locker room, or Washington can really put an exclamation point on this half. Mack oh. on the drive rejected nowhere to go as he took it in the land of the trees and Braxton Mia said get that stuff out of here let's go into the locker room with a nine point halftime lead and that's exactly what the Huskies do here at home what a performance for Washington on their home court, they have shot 60% from the field, 66 from three-point range, and they go in with a nine-point lead over the Bruins here in Seattle. Welcome back to Seattle. What a first half for Braxton Mia and these Washington Huskies. Mia, one of two players in double figures with 11 points, getting it done on the defensive end as well. This is the last play of the half. Sebastian Mack driving, and Mia gets the block. 
They're pacing for uh, well above their average of, <laughs> of 80 points with 44 points in the first half, and they've been spectacular shooting the ball from it, the field. The Huskies have made eight threes, okay? This is the sixth straight game that the Washington Huskies has, have made at least eight threes, so they are finding the rhythm. However, it's the first time they've ever done it in a single half, first or second half all season, so that was very unusual, and you know Mick Cronin is absolutely going nuts in the locker room right now because he expects the Bruins' defense to be a lot better than that, but now that they're in a hold in, can the UCLA offense score enough points to keep up with the Huskies tonight? That is the question that will be answered here in Seattle in the second half. Let's send it to Mike Kill and Laval Jordan in the studio after the break. Dan Helley, Casey Jacobson with you here in Seattle. You're looking at Braxton Mia. He's been a UCLA killer. He had 20 in their last game in Westwood. 11 here tonight. Look at this sweet pass from Wheeler inside to Braxton Mia, but the Fresno State transfer's been a little banged up most of the season, and it looked like that ankle that he sprained a while ago is acting up again, Case. Yeah, it's his left ankle. This is right after that dunk that we showed you. He reached for it, and we've been watching him since he came out of the locker room at halftime. He is gingerly walking. He didn't do any running and jumping on it. He shot a couple of free throws. He retied his shoes a little bit tighter. But look at the, he, Braxton Mia to me, Dan, is the difference in the game right now. 11 points, hasn't missed a shot, four rebounds, zero turnovers. Uh, he has played his role to perfection. He's got a couple of blocks as well. But obviously we will be keeping an eye on his mobility here in the second half. And on the other end, you have Adem Bona, who had a team high 22 in UCLA's win over Washington in mid-January. Just six points so far tonight. And Keon Brooks with the first bucket of the half of the Huskies. Oh, that, is, that was so easy. And Dem Bona, you got to crowd Keon Brooks Jr. a little bit more than that. And Keon Brooks can do a little bit of everything, right? He's a, I call him a four-level scorer. From three, from the mid-range, at the rim. And the fourth level is the free throw line. He gets there as often as anybody. Max three-pointer off the mark. Bear K. Buchton Jell says it's staying here, and indeed it is. UCLA in the first half to start. Shot it really well from the three point arc. And then the Huskies have settled into this zone, and UCLA, they're not making threes, and they're not getting very much penetration. Stefanovic from the corner with a big three for the Bruins. Right as I say that. Stefanovic drills one. Still no penetration. Though. Everything was on the outside, on the perimeter. That's not sustainable for UCLA's offense. Wood kicking it out to Wheeler. Wheeler taking a glance up at the shot clock. Plenty of time. Okay, he with the shot clock winding down now, doesn't get it off in time. And okay, he's frustrated. He's lost a little bit of his confidence. He's got to shoot the first one. He's passing up a couple and making it harder on himself. And he needs to take a, a page from Lazar Stefanovic's book. He always shoots the first one when he's open. Stefanovic leading the way for UCLA from distance with three threes. There's Bona trying to take it to Mia. But again, good defense by the Husky big man. Ball out of bounds will stay here off the Keon Brooks drive. That's got to be a finish for Dem Bona on the other end, Dan. I, you know, I know he's trying. Good post position, but he faded away instead of going to the rim. Wheeler playing a little two-man game with Brooks for a minute. Here's Mulcahy driving, gets tied up on his way to the bucket. It's going to be Sebastian Mack called for the foul. And maybe a trip to the foul line will get Mulcahy going here. And I have followed his career, and his four years at Rutgers for Steve Peichel's squad. Rutgers was on our air previously to this game tonight. And... Rutgers fans love Mulcahy and his ability to pass the ball. He's a good driver. 
And he's one of the better defenders in the Big Ten the last several years. And that's why Mike Hopkins went and got him. He, he needed a, a, a defender, another ball mover. And there's been times where Mulcahy okay. just he, he lacks that, that pop over the last couple of weeks. Well, he broke his finger earlier in the season, went to a little bit of a slump, just getting right the last few games. And when you listen to Mike Hopkins talk about Mulcahy, he says when, when he plays well, we're a different team. And tonight, his team is playing well and shooting well as the little floater goes for McClendon. There's that penetration that I was asking for, and I'm sure Mick Cronin and associate head coach Darren Savino are doing the same. As we can't just pass the ball around the perimeter and hope for the best. Somebody's got to get some penetration going. And Woods bumped. Will McClendon here. Dylan Andrews changed his mind mid-shot there. It ends up being the right decision. And McClendon drives that ball, and he sees Braxton Mia coming. And that's the, the influence that a guy like Mia can have in his length. Guys don't want to get their shot blocked at the rim, so they got to have that medium-range game. Okay, he going to the bench. An instant offense in Corin Johnson has entered the ball game. Brooks got it. He is always shot ready. You know what I mean by that? His, his butt is down, his hands are out. He's communicating to his teammates that he wants the ball and that he's ready to shoot. Bona driving and called for the offensive foul. Good defensive positioning by Mia, who has been great on both ends of the court tonight for Washington. And he exaggerates this contact. Watch. If Mia doesn't fall, he doesn't get this call. That off arm right there, he goes down. If he toughs that out, right? If he says, no, no, I'm going to hold my ground, then that's going to be two points for Bona. Instead, he hits the deck and he gets the call. Bona got that chicken wing in there, but I think you are correct. And another three-pointer for the Huskies, Moses Wood with his third of the game. So three for Wood, four for Brooks, and two for Wheeler. Moses Wood can really shoot that ball and UCLA. I, I've never seen them struggle guarding the three uh, Excuse me the pick and roll like they have tonight. They have no answer There's Brooks working on McClendon Backing him down falling away You can gel with the board Thought about it, drives instead. Now somebody's got to shoot the ball. We had I mean, two good looks there. Yeah, unselfishness, I like it, but somebody's got to say, all right, I'm going to take it and make it. Yukon Joe had the rebound, but Kenneth Nuba knocked it out of his hands. Corn Johnson, ring around the Rosie and out. UCLA hasn't scored in the last two and a half minutes. Three-pointer by Buchton Gel is short. And UCLA is a team that's not really built to come from behind. I know they have come from behind before, but it's not like the three-point shot is not their weapon of choice. They only shoot about 16 a game. And they're gonna have to make some to get back in this one. Wood from Wheeler. Let's make it four for four from three-point range for Moses Wood. He has 14. And the lead 17 for Washington. The crowd starting to come alive, Case. Well, why wouldn't they? Washington is shooting 69% from three on the game. And pick and roll, whether they use the screen or reject the screen, or they're throwing chest passes or behind the back, it's all working for the Huskies. Back in 
Seattle. Beautiful night and a beautiful game here by the Washington Huskies up by 17. And you don't see these numbers very often, Casey Jacobson. 62% from the field, 69% from three-point range, just 50% from the line. But that's okay when you shoot that well from the field, you're fine. Yeah, I always say that the three-point shot is like makeup on a pimply face. Like, it just covers up all the other mistakes that you have. Like, you can get beasted on the glass, doesn't matter. You can miss free throws, it doesn't matter. You make 11 threes out of 16 attempts, and you're gonna have a 17, at least a 17-point lead at home, that is certainly the difference in this game. 11 of 16 from three-point range. The season high as a team is 13. And they have nearly 15 minutes to surpass that. Washington averaging 80 points per game, second best in the Pac-12. UCLA, not a great shooting team, but a very stingy team defensively, and they just haven't had an answer for the Huskies here tonight. Yeah, this is a top 30, like according to Ken Palm's defensive efficiency rate, so this is like a top 30, 35 national defense UCLA. You would not know it by watching their performance tonight. Wood got a hand on it. He thought it went out of bounds on Stefanovic, but indeed it's going to stay here as Washington remains up by 17. So far, so good for the Huskies here in Seattle. And so far, the Huskies have been serving up a delightful game for the fans here. Yeah, and Moses Wood has really just caught fire, especially here in the second half. Last year, averaged 15 points a game as a Portland pilot. He was brought here to do just this, spread the defense. He's shooting four for four from the three-point line on the game. And there's one thing that you have to know if you're a UCLA Bruin defensive player. Moses Wood. 68% of his total shots this year have been threes. He is not a rim driver. He is a shot maker from the perimeter. And he has taken 27% of this team's threes this year. He takes a lot and makes a lot, and that time it's Dylan Andrews making it. Andrews with 14 points leading the way for the Bruins. Right. He's been one of only two bright spots offensively. Dylan Andrews and, and Lazar Stefanovic are the only guys that really have any offensive flow at all. Adem Bona has really struggled to get things going down low. He's just two for six from the field. Mia fighting for that rebound. It's going to stay here off the foot of Bona and then out of bounds. By the way, Dan, I, I've been watching Braxton Mia, and he is he, he is definitely slowing down. And But credit him, he's, he's gotten it out, and that time he got a fingertip on that basketball. It gets his team an extra possession. And there he is again, Keon Brooks, with a season-high five three-pointers. Check that. A career-high. Five threes here tonight. Hard yeah. to believe for the leading scorer in the pack. Yeah, I mean, he's mostly a mid range nightmare, a post up player on nice. There's Bona. Oh, what happened there? Washington defensively. But yeah, going back to Keon Burst Jr., it, you know, he can shoot threes, but that's not his preferred weapon. And tonight, it's, it's, it's what UCLA has given him. There's Mia gathering, spinning, and then throwing it down. Oh, foot looks pretty good. Hey, you have to credit him for yeah. toughing it out, but he's been playing with that ankle for a while now. I think he's just used to playing in pain. Tough kid. Braxton Mia, I mentioned that 20 points he had against UCLA. That was last year at home. Here's Boner returning the favor. Anytime UCLA has gotten dribble penetration into the lane, that time it was via the baseline. Good things have happened. It just hasn't happened enough. Bona and Mia are really fun watching those guys just take their anger out on the rim. Bona 
call for the foul. This is going to be the third foul on Bona as Mia's really slow to get up. Yeah. I think he tweaked that ankle again. Oh, well, this one, it looked, it looked healthy on this one. And not too many people dunk on a Dem Bona. And I think he was mad. He said, all right, I'm going to do the same. Try and block this. Yeah. Braxton Mia is, is going to the bench right now, partner. This is what happened here. It's the, it's the left ankle. You see how he'll barely put it on the ground. He's, he's coming out of the game right now. I doubt we see Braxton Mia back in this game. Wilhelm Breidenbach checking in. Haven't missed a beat. UCLA really needs to get something going here. Andrew is pulling up too strong. Nice tip from Brandon Williams, number five. Yeah, kept that alive. He can shoot the three. Andrews with the strong drive, but doesn't drop. But you could Joe called for the foul on the driving Keon Brooks. An 18 point lead for Washington. Timeout has been called. Just over 11 and a half to go here in the game. Well, we talked about that defense. Opponents only scoring 64 points per game on UCLA. Well, tonight, the Huskies have put 64 on the board, and they have 11 and a half minutes to go. And you can tell that that's the look on Mick Cronin's face says it all, although that's also his happy face. It's actually hard to distinguish <laughs> one from the other, but Mick's really frustrated. That's Darren Tavino on our left, Rod Palmer on our right, and they are one of the better staffs in the country at getting their guys to understand the defensive scheme, how to guard a guy like Keon Brooks, where to force him, and nothing has worked. Keon Brooks is in a rhythm. Moses Wood is perfect from the field. Sabine Wheeler's getting to the rim, and it's kind of a back to the drawing board type of defensive game. But we still have 11 and a half to go. Well, it's just been that kind of season for UCLA. I think they knew there was going to be some bumps in the road with seven incoming freshmen on the roster. At one point, they were 6-10. and ten. They lost by 46 to Utah in January. And then they came back to beat Washington as Andrews hits that shot. And they won, they won six games in a row, right? They've come into this one having won eight of the last 11 games. So certainly they know how to put it together but they have some work to do here tonight yeah and coming off you know two home losses i wonder if that kind of shook this team's confidence just a little bit all the confidence that they had gained by that winning streak here's wheeler driving on the uton gel really tough shot couldn't get it to go corn johnson called for the foul andrews kind of lost the handle on that Lost in a kind of lackluster offensive performance for UCLA. How about Dylan Andrews? He, he's been great. 16 points on 7 of 11 shooting, 6 assists, and 0 turnovers. Like, that's fantastic for the sophomore point guard. And he has had very little help from an offensive standpoint tonight. Yeah, and Andrews is kind of symbolic of, of what's been going on with this young team, right, in terms of the ebbs and flows. He's coming off a scoreless game against USC, and he comes back here with 16 here tonight as Stefanovic nails the three, his fourth of the game. But can they get stops? That, that's the question that Bruins fans that are watching this game are asking. Corin Johnson on the freshman Butin gel, too strong fighting for the rebound and they're calling the foul it will stay here and Lazar Stefanovic does a really nice job of just reading screens Keon Brooks Jr. he gets caught for a second he continues to fight through but that's all the space that, that Stefanovic needs he got off to a really hot start first five minutes of this game and then kind of in that middle eight minutes Dan Stefanovic was was a non-factor but don't let him get fired up again or this guy, for that matter. 
Warren Johnson grabs his own rebound off the miss. Wheeler resets. Wheeler loses the ball out of bounds. Buchton Joe was there. Dan, Sophia Wheeler is very good at rejecting the ball screen, meaning instead of the defense is anticipating a ball screen that he's going to use it, and he often goes the opposite way. Brooks, wide open. He's adding to that new career high with every three-point make. Now six threes in the game for Keon Brooks, Jr. Been a, been a pleasure to watch this young man play play hoop tonight. Not just tonight, but in, in his Washington career. Here's McClendon working on Johnson. Nice. Pump fake, fouled. He'll go to the line. Summer for UCLA just got a T. Might have been oh, Johnson. no, it was Corn Johnson. Yeah. Right, I saw I saw Mick Cronin throwing yeah, his arms well, up over there. I thought, exactly I thought it was, where I was looking too. He thought it was Mick. He got a T in the first. By the way, folks, if you just tuned it. Mick Cronin got a T in the first 20 seconds of this game, the quickest T I've seen all season. But no, that was on Corn Johnson. So Stefanovic makes them both. He now has 16. Stefanovic came into this game averaging 14 points and seven rebounds over his last 11 games. He's been playing good basketball. They'll need more of that here tonight as they continue to chip away. And Stefanovic's got another year of eligibility, by the way. He's a fourth-year junior, but he could come back for his, for his extra year. And you know, if you look at it like that, this, this UCLA team could be a handful next season. Well, he's the only junior in the starting lineup. We've talked about how young they are, but he's been a key piece to the puzzle. Corin Johnson, I think he was so upset because that's his fourth foul. He's uh, taking a seat on the bench in and out for McClendon. Wood for three. First miss of the game. He has been red hot. The Uchtin Chell to the hoop. He's fouled and will go to the line. Chance for a three-point play. Oh, and it looks like the UCLA Bruins offense has woken up. They're getting a couple of stops, or at least Washington's missing open shots, which is helping them. And here's Buchan Joe. Easy call, Moses Wood. So slowly but surely, UCLA starting to chip away at this lead a little bit. Nine minutes and 15 seconds, all kinds of time. Yeah, but, you know, they have to be able to play both ends, which is something that they haven't been able to do, you know, for a long stretch of this game. It's either they can make shots, but they can't stop, or they can stop and they can't make shots. <laughs> either way, that's how you get back into the game. And then the last, in the last three minutes, that's what UCLA has done. They've they put it together. And I expect Mike Hopkins to say, all right, let's settle things down. Maybe go back with the Saville Wheeler ball screen, maybe with Keon Brooks Jr. or Moses Wood. It's something that UCLA has really had no answer for all, all evening. Washington continues to shoot very well from the field. 65% from three-point range. They're 13 of 20. They have now tied their season high for three-pointers. But Yukton Jill at the line. The freshman from Bursa, Turkey. Actually, roommates with Lazar Stefanovic said that he's really helped him kind of assimilate. You know, we forget with all these international players because it's become such a regular thing in college and in the NBA. But for the young guys who are living in another country for the first time, it, 
Everything's different. Not only is the language different, but the, the food's different. The living right. situation's different. It's, it's a big adjustment for anyone, especially an 18-year-old kid. I hear you, Dan, and thanks for bringing that up. I mean, I, I played overseas, and it's it's a definitely a cultural adjustment. And how about this? These, these guys have to go to class, right. too, right? Like, in a, in a language that they didn't learn, you know, when they were born. And that's got to be a real challenge. And they're going to call the foul on the Yukton Gel. Just a massive influx of international players. Buchan Gel being one of those guys. This is his third foul. And it's a team. 17 foul, so Washington is in the bonus. I mean, despite UCLA's youth, they are the youngest team in the Pac-12, the least experienced team in the Pac-12. They were still picked preseason third. And one of the reasons why is because the influx of all these international players like Buk and Joe were highly rated prospects. A lot of college basketball programs were going after these guys. Some of them were considered to be one and done, potentially players, including Mara and Buk and Joe. And it's been a, a, a tough adjustment. Well, in the long run, as Stefanovic throws it up there, he was looking for Bona. Bona able to keep it alive. You know, it was definitely a pass. It was McClendon with the wide open three. Stefanovic keeping it alive. And McClendon struggling a little bit. Number four in blue. He's won for his last eight from three over the course of several games, but still. Wheeler does not like that foul call at all. He was trying to fight his way through the screen, but it looked like he was on the receiving end of the contact. Is this a moving screen? Uh, certainly Wheeler sold that as best as he could. <laughs> you know, UCLA is a little closer to Hollywood, but these, uh, these Huskies tonight have been doing a great acting job. I'm not mad at him. Well, it's been working. Washington up by 17 with just over eight minutes to go. Dylan Andrews. Nia with the board and the McClendon. Gets a hand on it, call for the foul. So, you know, Washington's been an interesting story this year. Frank Kepnow got hurt he's kind of the, the energizer for this team second year in a row he had a knee injury last year he tore his acl hurt it again this year he's played one half of a pac-12 game in two years for washington and certainly not the only reason that they've had their struggles but he he was an important piece that has not been around in pac-12 play no, certainly and there's there's urgency for this husky season right this is an older group at one point at the start of the year, Mike Hopkins had four graduate, like, fifth-year seniors. Now Braxton Mee has been in the starting lineup for a little bit, and he's a fourth-year junior. But still, this is a Washington Husky program that is only uh, the last time they made the NCAA tournament was 2019. And I know for a lot of fans, that's, that's not the standard they want to have. It's the shot and gets fouled. <laughs> And that's five fouls on Corin Johnson. So he's done for the night. Here's another look. Uh, Dylan Andrews has been given the UW Huskies defense the business. He might be one of the only guys, but they got to figure it out. And we still have enough time here if UCLA can string together a few stops to get back in it. Washington head coach Mike Hopkins told us today the most improved player on the team and possibly the conference is the conference's leading scorer, Keon Brooks Jr. Last year he shot 29% from three. This year he's been hovering around 40%. And just if you need proof, watch this these clips. Ask Mick Cronin what's been happening to his defense. Keon Brooks Jr. is what's happening to the defense. Six for seven from three, and no Washington Husky has hit seven threes in a game since Dominic Green did it in 2018. Keon Brooks just one away from tying. And 
Keep in mind that it's a tight rotation for the Huskies. Mike Hopkins only likes to play eight guys. He's lost one of them now. Corin Johnson has fouled out. So we did see a little bit of Anthony Holland earlier. We'll probably see some more of him with Johnson fouled out. Keon Brooks, I'm surprised he wasn't more aggressive on that ball screen. Oh, all alone inside. That's too easy for me. He plays this role so well, right? He, he doesn't complain if he doesn't get the ball. He's constantly setting good screens, and he just dives straight to the rim every time. Wheeler snacks a long rebound. He is off and running, and oh, can't convert. Had the open layup. UCLA down by 14. Sebastian Mack. Around the back to Bona, who is met at the hoop by Mia. <laughs> Bracton Mia didn't even bother to run that. He's trying to save that left ankle for a, another potential block shot here at the rim. Impressive. I mean, he's probably at 50% right now, the way he's moving around. But he's been able to, to save the energy for when it's needed most, whether he's going to dunk it at one end or block a shot at the other. Pretty gutty performance from yeah, him. Yeah, he's been an absolute warrior tonight. 17 points, six rebounds, hasn't missed a shot from the field. A little bit easier when you're seven one and five of your makes have been dunks. Yeah, but there's a lot of seven footers that, that do not finish around the rim. That's a good point. Like Braxton Mia. Husky's just content to use all 30 seconds of the shot clock here. Brooks double team tries to split it, loses the handle for a minute, then he's fouled by Will McClendon. Wow, that was a that was a grown man move right there, Dan. Like McClendon, he gets the foul, but it was. Keon Brooks Jr. who just leveled him. Watch this off arm. The right arm is going to swing in here. Boom. Right on that shoulder. Going to move him out. He's going to do it again. Go right into that shoulder. That's one of those, like, you get the foul, and, like, you're you're the one that got hurt, right? <laughs> Will McClendon. Adding uh, insult to injury. Keon Brooks, one of seven Division I players, averaging 20.6 rebounds and shooting 49% or better from the field. He only went for 12 in that first game against UCLA and Westwood. He has 26 here tonight with a career-high six threes. Yeah, they really they really made him work uh, UCLA defensively against Brooks. And, and tonight, they, they have allowed him to step into wide-open threes, and that's where he gained his most rhythm. Well, that was a shot in rhythm by Lazar Stefanovic. And you mentioned it, just two guys really Doing the bulk of the scoring in Stefanovic, who has 18, and Andrews with 19. You can't win a game on the road if you only have two guys that are showing up offensively. Brooks. Oh, wow. How about that? Mia hustling for the board and that banged up ankle. Okay, he nearly has it stripped, gets it back. Out to Wheeler for the three with the shot clock winding down. Mia gets it down low, puts the ball on the ground, kicks it back out. Mia now with eight rebounds on his way to a double-double. Trying to get it into Mia again. Looks like... He's slow to get up. Looks like he might have got a hand in the eye there. Bona down low. Yeah, they're going to have to get Braxton Mia out of the game here, I think. He's having a conversation with Amy Bonner after he took that swipe across the face. Oh, he's going to stay out there. All right. 
just took that possession off. <laughs> <laughs> From the corner, Paul Mulcahy with his first three of the game. It's only his third shot. He really just he hasn't been aggressive at all. He's, he's a good driver, but when he gets in the lane, he's driving a pass. Why, why wouldn't Stefanovic just shoot that himself? Sure. It worked out, but... Yeah. And, and Washington's defense, they there were two guys that backed up to try and take away that lob opportunity for Bona. I'm, I'm with you on that. And it worked out, though. 79-66, under four to go here in Seattle. Wheeler dropping it off to Mia. Another assist for Wheeler, another dunk for Mia, who now has 19. By the way, that's 11 assists for Wheeler. Here's Stefanovic. This time he does take the shot himself. Man, what kind of defense was that from, from Washington? That was a pass from half court, direct line to the basket for Stefanovic, who was just waiting on the block. Washington's defense has been really good up until that that possession. McClendon called for another foul as Keon Brooks continues to have his way with the sophomore from Las Vegas. Washington hitting threes, dropping dimes, dunking on people's head, up by 13 with 315 to go. Washington back home in the cozy confines of Alaska Airlines Arena and they have been putting on a show tonight right now at 81 points right on their season average a healthy 13 point lead as we take a look at Mike DeCourcy's newest NCAA tournament bracket forecast. Yeah, these are the Pac-12 teams that Mike DeCourcy says are still either in the field or on the bubble. And what's interesting that I, I think is interesting, a month ago we were talking about, man, the Pac-12 might only get two teams, and now there are legitimate five teams that are fighting. Oregon just last night got a nice win against their rival, Oregon State. And Utah and Colorado have been up and down and all around. There's, there's no doubt about that. Those two teams have been very inconsistent. But I have watched them. You have watched them. Those feel like tournament teams, Agreed. but your resume's got to stack up. We got a, a week and a half left. Who is going to finish strong? Because I, if I'm speaking honestly, Dan, not all five of those teams are going to get in. But they, right now, they have, all have a chance. Well. UCLA came into this game with a chance to move into the top four in the Pac-12 with a win. Looks like they'll need a miracle here. Down by 15 with three to go as Washington has just been superb on both ends of the floor. And you see right there, it's, it's not a surprise. They average 80 points a game as Dylan Andrews, again, look, the, the only guy that's really just he has found the crevices in the man or the zone defenses against Washington tonight. He, he's played brilliantly. Dylan Andrews with 21 points after being held scoreless against USC. I, I love that. I love that bounce back performance, right? Awesome. Like, as a player, if I went scoreless, I, I was in the film room the next day. I was in the gym shooting my frustrations out and knowing that I would have a, another chance to get on the floor a couple days later and prove myself. And it, it speaks a lot to this young man, Dylan Andrews, his character, his mental toughness. I, I, I love this performance, even if it comes in a loss. Dylan Andrews with the 21, as we mentioned, Stefanovic with 20. So they're carrying the load. Dembona has 14, but he just picked up his fourth foul. And it's Brooks at the line, and he now has 30 on the night. Pac-12's leading scorer has been all that and a bag of chips tonight. He has been <laughs> phenomenal. His pass. Stavanovic with 22. It, it almost feels like UCLA offensively has found, like, you know, kind of a, a solution to the zone by sticking Lazar Stefanovic kind of in that mid-range, close to that right block. And he's been able to get either touches in there penetration passes or buckets it's almost like too little too late though where where was that 
the first 30 minutes of this game against the zone. You know, when you look at Washington and what they've done here tonight, obviously Brooks has had a monster game, and you have Wheeler doing his thing with 11 assists, but it's Braxton Mia toughing it out on that injured ankle. I mean, just throwing it down on people and getting blocks on the defensive end. Spectacular. He's, he has a simple role on offense and defense. His role on offense is to screen and dive and look for lobs and look for dunks, just like this. And Sa Xavier Wheeler is an excellent passer, so is Paul Mulcahy. Keon Brooks Jr. is also a guy that's gonna, you know, to command a double team. So Braxton Mia likes to live in the shadows and he's feeding off of those guys. And then on the defensive end, he, he just, he patrols the paint. He's a good shot blocker and an excellent rebounder. 19 points here for Braxton Mia. 20 points in the loss to UCLA oh. last year. Oh. And what we haven't said this entire game, as Moses Wood gets pushed out of bounds and the foul is called on UCLA on Stefanovic, I believe, is that Washington has lost nine straight games to the Bruins. That's wild, huh? And I think 17 of 20. Incredible. I mean, talk about a team having your number. I mean, Washington's had plenty of talent. Yeah, it's just, that, that, that's weird. Yeah, so it's it's been a minute since Washington <laughs> has tasted victory against the Bruins. Not quite over yet with 2.20 to go, but up by 14 as Braxton Mia takes a seat. What an awesome performance it has been for the big man here tonight. He will end up with 19 points and eight rebounds. And a couple of big blocks. You know, they talk about basketball being a game of inches. Savir Wheeler called for the foul as he was trying, trying to poke the ball away from Bona, but so many close calls and games that are a couple of missed free throws away from being a win for Washington. UCLA could say the same, but yeah. You know, on this on this night, shooting like they've shot, playing like they have on the defensive end, this Husky squad looks like it could be a formidable team when the Pac-12 tournament rolls around. That's the crazy thing about college basketball to me. We cover the sport, and on a night-to-night -night basis, it, it, you don't know what you're going to get. This Washington Husky team at home has been awesome. And if you've never seen them play, you're like, man, how are they possibly, how do they have a losing record in the Pac-12 conference? It's hard to win on the road. Bona makes the free throw, and... Elon Feeble will check in for the Bruins. Full court pressure coming here from UCLA. Yeah, they don't have a choice right now. They got to try and figure out how to create some turnovers. And it's going to stay here, tipped out of bounds by UCLA. Yeah, UCLA doesn't often. You know, or at least for a sustained period of time, full court press. But you got to start trapping and doing whatever they can. Look at Wheeler splitting the triple team. Bona with the block. Going to stay here. Well, he's so quick getting to the basket. The only player I can think of in the Pac-12 who's who's close is is Davon Smith from Utah. As far as quickness, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a jet. Davon Smith. Uh, for Utah, Georgia Tech transfer. Oh, pretty move by Keon Brooks. Adding to his point total. Give him 32. He's pretty quick, too, when he needs to be, right? He may not be as fast as Davon Smith, but like his size, his athleticism. One twenty-one to go, 15-point lead for the Huskies, content to milk this clock a little bit. Wonder if Keon Brooks knows that he's just three points away from tying his career high. Well, maybe someone will tell him in this timeout right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might be a topic of discussion. 
Well, he's done a little bit of everything, taking what the defense gives, and the defense has given him a lot. He's taken a lot, too. 32 points. You know, this is a night that he will never forget here at America, excuse me, Alaska Airlines Arena. And Seattle faithful are lucky to have him spend his first three years at Kentucky. But he, he was a starter his junior year at Kentucky. I think he just wanted a little bit more. And Mike Hopkins said, why don't you come on over down here, or up here, over here <laughs> to Seattle. Over and up. Over and up to the Pacific Northwest. We'd love to have you. We need a scorer like you more than John Calipari needs you, to be honest. And that's not an insult to Calipari, but Keon Bros Jr. is needed here 10 times more than he's needed in Lexington. Well, things haven't played out exactly as he would have hoped in terms of wins and losses, but Keon Brooks is one of the reasons that Sabir Wheeler ended up in Washington. Oh, he banks in the three! Sabir Wheeler with a double-double. The first Husky with a double-double and five rebounds since 2017. He's actually done it one other time himself, but he's the only guy that's done that here at Washington as Wood gets tied up. I mean, how far is this, 35 feet? <laughs> you know my measuring too, it's about 30 footer. Yeah, 30 footer bank. By the way, that's his 4-3 of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen threes as a team for Washington. If we were, when we were talking to Mike Hopkins before the game, if we had told him, hey, you're going to have 15 threes, <laughs> big smile across right. his face. Let's go. And they're hoping that they can bottle up some of this momentum to the Pac-12 tournament in 10 days in Las Vegas. What a performance by the Huskies here tonight. Keon Brooks takes his seat, and we, we did not give Braxton Mia his proper flowers. I he's did, a, I was talking about him all night. Well, hey, how about this? He's the first Washington player since 1997 to score 17 with five blocks and shoot 100% from the field. Oh, man. I gradu graduated college in 1997. That was a long time ago. Uh, I, was, I was a sophomore at Glendora High School in Los Angeles. Just launching then. threes. Launching them, oh yeah. <laughs> Braxton Mia, what a night. And what a night for this entire Washington Husky squad here at home. Listen, this was not an easy feat against the UCLA team that beat them earlier in the year at Westwood. Came into this game having won eight of their last 11 games. 94-77 the final. Impressive performance by the Huskies. Yeah, and, and really fun. Fun atmosphere, and the students here loved it. This has been a team that's been up and down, but when they are right, man, they showed the potential that they have with Keon Brooks leading the way, Braxton Mia dunking on everybody, Sabir Wheeler pushing the pace, Moses Wood as a stretch forward. They have the components, and they did this against one of the best defensive teams in the Pac-12. That's what made it even more impressive. And guess what? They did it on leap day, in a leap year. Well, maybe we'll come back here four years from now and see what the Huskies are doing on, on next leap day. Year. I like that. As we, uh, as we move into March, the Huskies snap a nine-game losing streak to UCLA. They have USC coming up next right here on their home court. What a performance by the Huskies. Huge win over the UCLA Bruins here at Alaska Airlines Arena. 94-77 the final for Casey Jacobson and our fantastic crew here in the truck. I'm Dan Helley. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great rest of your week.